church. Church of God, it is good to be with you this morning. And as we approach, approach this time of worship, this time of gathering together, uh, this time of being here in God's creation, this time of fellowship with one another, let's not forget why we are here this morning. As we prepare to worship, if you are willing, if you are able, would you stand with me as we hear the word of God from the book of Psalm? This is Psalm 95. Hear the psalmist's words here and, and let this be, if you need a reason to worship this morning, if you need a reason to to focus this morning, if you need a reason to, to open up your heart to what God might do here this morning, let this be a motivation to do so. The psalmist says in Psalm 95, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song for the Lord is the great God, the great God, says the psalmist, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. May it be so this morning. Let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Bow at his feet, he has a name. 
We're happy you're here this morning. You're glad to be here? Yeah. Wish I had as much energy as the little ones in front up here. We've got some dancing going on. If you're not dancing in the freedom today, you, you're allowed to do that. Hope you're feeling it. This one's called Bigger Than I Thought. Understand me, you understand. 
I've carried a burden. I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. But hear your invitation to let it all go.
We give you praise that we have the opportunity to gather and to worship you. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful weather, for the created space out here, for all of the many ways you continue to provide. They all reveal your goodness. Lord, as we journey through the story in this next series in our sermons, would you continue to reveal your goodness to us? We ask that you bless your servant, Robbie, as he prepares to share the word you've laid on his heart this week. Open our hearts and our minds to receive what it is you have for us, Lord. We give you all the praise, and it's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie, Pastor Jeannie is our intern from Mid-America Nazarene, and she's been with us for over a year now. Um, and she just recently was licensed through the Kansas City District, which is a great thing, yeah. And uh, we are thrilled to have you, Jeannie, and thrilled to have you a part of the team and a part of uh, a part of a part of the church, and thank you for for everything uh, that you do. Well, this is uh, this is a, a different day, uh, a different day. Some of you may have just showed up thinking that we always meet at at ten thirty on Sunday, but this is this is the first week that we're doing this, and it's a good thing because uh, you think oh, it's a little chilly right now. You should have felt it about nine o'clock, and you actually should have felt it about uh, seven thirty or so when we started sitting up. Or setting things up, it was it was a little chilly. So I think this was a this was a pretty pretty good move. Um, but we we are glad that you are here this morning. Uh, we're looking forward to after the service our our second annual pigskin rumble, our matchup of of teens versus uh, parents and staff in our flag football game at the field back there. You'll hear more about that. Uh, but we're just uh, just excited not only about that. I'm really excited about what God has laid on my heart, not not just for this morning, but what he's laid on, on the hearts of our staff for what the next uh, eight weeks look like as we, we kind of take a, a broad view, a broad scope of God's word. See, this is a, this is a story. In here is a story. And, and, and I, I, I think one of the mistakes that we make as, as, scripture readers as bible readers as as students of scripture as i'll be honest with you i make this mistake as as a preacher of the word we oftentimes just take little sections or little verses and and we don't provide a big context we don't we don't provide uh, the big story we we take those passages and, and i don't think this is necessarily a bad thing but we'll take those passages and, and we'll say, well, this is what this passage says. And, and we'll dive into that and we'll dig into that. Or, or we'll, we'll take this one verse and we'll say, well, this is what this verse says. So, so obviously, uh, this is how I would move forward uh, from this point. But we've got to remember that those verses and, and those chapters and, and these books of the Bible, they are a part of a big story. And so our goal through the next eight weeks is to touch on some of the big main themes of that big story. Now, story, a good story is really powerful. So I remember growing up, uh, I remember even as a young kid, my grandfather on my dad's side was an amazing storyteller. He could take a story that literally didn't have much of, a, of an exciting subject or an exciting conflict, but he, he would make it into such a story that we would sit around and we just couldn't wait to hear how the story ended. It could have been a story about his, his, his days in, in World War II, which he didn't talk about very often. It could simply be an encounter that he had with, 
with someone at a gas station. But he could tell incredible stories. He could captivate us as an audience. I remember, remember as a little kid, I remember at times I would not go play with my cousins who were running around outside and being active and having fun because I didn't want to miss one of Grandpa's stories. He had a way with stories. And story has a way of captivating and capturing our human heart. Someone who can tell a really good story can get our attention. In his book, Story Brand, Donald Miller talks about the power of a good story and how a good story can motivate us to action. And he says that a good story, and I think this could be debatable, but in, in his eyes, a good story has, has some, some characteristics. It has some, some aspects that, that every good story has this, he says. So every good story, according to him, has a character, right? So there's a, there's a person involved. That character has a problem, and then that character meets a guide or someone who helps them, who knows better than them, who gives them a plan and calls that person to action that helps them avoid failure, and then the story ends in success. And if you think of any probably good movie or, or any good story, any good book that you read, it will have these elements. There's a character who has a problem, who meets someone who knows better, who gives them a plan, who calls them to action, who helps them avoid failure of that problem, and then it ends in some sort of success. Let me give you some examples today. Some examples that perhaps you've heard of, the Star Wars, right? Most of us have heard of Star Wars. So in Star Wars, now, in any movie, in any book, there are smaller stories that are taking place. There are, there are different stories that are, ha that are happening uh, at the same time. But overall, in Star Wars, there's a character, Luke Skywalker, and Luke has a problem. And his problem is the Empire. And he meets a guide, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who gives him a plan, trust the Force, Luke, and calls him to action, go rally the troops and defeat the Empire. And this helps him avoid failure, which is defeat, and ends in success where the rebellion avoids defeat. And then it happens like 14 more times, right? Like all those movies that are like, hey, this is a pretty good story. Let's recreate it, all right? And, what about the movie Toy Story? Right? So there's a movie Toy Story. And within that, there's many different stories. But there's, there's characters. Andy's toys. Andy's toys have a problem. They're left behind by Andy and his mom when they move. And they're tortured by Sid and his dog Spike. They meet a guide... Woody and Buzz, who have their problems, who create a plan for the toys, they call them to work together. And they call them to action. Let's defeat Sid and Spike. This helps them avoid failure, destruction in the landfill, and it ends in success. They find their way home safely with Andy, right? Here's another story that you might identify with. A character, Chiefs fans, have a problem several months ago, about this time last year, the, 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 actually in January or February, that the Chiefs have fourth down and they're trailing in the Super Bowl. See, 
Chiefs fans meet a guide, a, a man named Patrick Mahomes, who creates a plan. He says, let's run Wasp. The play. And he calls fans to actions. He says, jump on my back. I will carry you. I will lead you to the promised land. And this helps us as fans avoid failure, which would have been losing the game. And it ends in success where the Chiefs and all their fans are Super Bowl champions, right? I'm so glad that didn't get any amens. Thank you. I was waiting on it. What about this one? KU football fan. I'm interested to see how that story unfolds because I, 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 I don't have a... We have a problem. There's a big problem. Looking for a guide. Looking for a plan. Looking for somebody to call them to action. It's, it's I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that unfolds. But story is meaningful. It captivates us. And the Bible contains, this book right here, it contains the greatest and the most important story that has ever been told. See, this is the story of God. But this is also our story. This is the story of God, but this is our story. The key is we have to jump into the story. We have to agree to be a part of the story. Now, we're a part of the story already, already, whether we like it or not. But the success of the story depends on how much of ourselves we give up and are willing to be found in this story. It's a story in which we must consider where we find ourselves in this story. So let me give you a brief overview of this story and how it impacts us. See, there's, there's characters. The characters in the midst of this story it is us, people, we. And see, we have a problem, and that problem is sin. But see, we're introduced to a guide, God, God is our guide, who creates a plan, and the plan is to send his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus calls us to action. He calls us to obedience to God's kingdom. This obedience to God's kingdom enables us the opportunity to avoid failure, which is many, many things. But for me, it boils down to an unfulfilled life and a spiritual death. And it can end in success. The success is an abundant and an eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is that story. That story is in here. Amen? Amen. 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 As long as we allow ourselves to make this our story, right? So let's begin this series. And I know I've taken a little bit of additional time today to kind of set up this series. And today and next week are kind of going to be um, a, a mixture of two parts. Because today we're talking about creation. And we're just going to barely touch the surface today about creation. Now, today isn't about here's what creation is and here's exactly what happened and let's dive down. In. We don't have time to get way down into the nitty gritty of creation. But see, creation sets us up for next week where the problem comes in. The problem comes in and that's the fall. Sin enters 
the world. But this story begins with God. And our story, whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, whether we choose to, uh, to, to agree with it or not, our story always begins with God. It always begins with God. So I'm going to read today from Genesis chapter 1. And this is the creation story. If you notice today, we, we uh, for the first time in a while, we had some words up here on the screen. And I know not everybody could see them, but we wanted to just give it a shot and kind of see how it worked and, and see, see, see how it happened. And, and by the way, thank you, Marshall and Eli. I don't know where you guys went, but hey, thank you guys for, for running that today. You did a great job. Really appreciate that. These words will not be on the screen today. And normally I would have you stand up. Now, if at any point during this time that I'm reading, you feel like standing up, because you just need to or you just want to, feel free to do it. But I'm going to welcome you the opportunity to remain seated today if you would like to do that. And I'm going to read the creation story. And I want you to hear the creation story. Many of you are going to hear these words for the, as my grandma would have said, the upteenth time. That's a lot, by the way. Okay? You're going to hear these for the umpteenth time in your life, would you perhaps listen with an open heart? Your heart's here, not here. <laughs> the mind is next. Open heart and an open mind to hear what God's word might be communicating to us as this story opens up. Hear the word of the Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning that first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called this vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning on that second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place. And let dry ground appear. And it was so. And God called the dry ground land. And the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation. Seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it. According to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation. Plants bearing seeds according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning that third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning on that fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and, and that moves about in it according to their kind. And every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening 
and there was morning that fifth day. And then God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then he said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that is fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning that sixth day. The seventh day is not as long. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Whew. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So Genesis was, Genesis was written in an interesting time. Believe it or not, this, this, is, this is the first book that, that, that we read in the Bible, but it wasn't necessarily the, the first book that was actually written. See, but there were some things going on with, with Israel. It was written during a time most likely where Israel was in exile to Babylon. See, the people of Israel, God's people, were being influenced by Egyptian, Meso Mesopotamian, uh, Babylonian, all of these rules, the, this thought, this culture. They were being influenced by this. And this culture included the thought that there were multiple gods, that these gods were always created by mankind to address some sort of problem. And because each god wasn't big enough to address all the problems, they just keep creating more and more and more and more gods. And so this idea came that, that well, if you've got a problem, just create a god and, uh, you know, do some weird things and hope that it all works out for you. And if that god doesn't work, create another god. And, and you guys can create this God if you want. And, and if you guys don't like that God and you want to create this God over here, you guys go do that, you know, what, whatever you need to do. See this thought that was permeating. And so here are the Israelites in captivity. Many were slaves. Many were facing oppression. They were lacking hope. They had an uncertain future. They've got influence from over here and influence from over here. And, and people around them are telling them, well, hey, Israelites, if you would just follow our God, everything would be fine. If, no, no, no. If you just follow this God, everything will be fine. And so here's the Israelites. They're caught in the middle. They're being influenced by their culture. They're being told that the way they've done it for, for, for years and years and years wasn't the right way to do it. They were facing a time where people were saying, hey, this whole God thing just doesn't work anymore, does it? Yeah, because if the God thing worked, you wouldn't be oppressed. 
If the God thing worked, you wouldn't be uncomfortable. If the God thing worked, your life would be, you, your life would be just fine. And the Israelites started to believe what the influencers were telling them. So the writer of Genesis decides we need to start with the story. We need to start at the very beginning. We need to start with who God is. These people need to be reminded, God's people need to be reminded who God is. They're being pulled in all these different directions and they need to be reminded who Yahweh is. And the author starts with God, the creator. God, the creative. And we see in this passage, we learn several things. If you notice, there's some repetition there. And that's very much on purpose. And, and I, if I had time, I'd get into like the just the author's the way that, that he wrote, the way that, that he repeated all these different words and the number of times that he uses words, it is fascinating. Fascinating. All throughout here, there's different words that, that, that you know, the, the, the Bible, the perfect number in the Bible is seven, right? And you'll see if you study this, there are words that are repeated. Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42 times. Very intentional the way this was written. Very intentional. But the point is there's some repetitions. And we learn from that very first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And all throughout this, we learn four key things. Four key things that I believe this the author of Genesis was trying to get through to the people of Israel in the midst of this oppression. First, we learn that God exists. In the beginning, God. God exists. God is real. God is active. God is doing things. We learn that God is uncreated. And God is separated from creation. In the beginning, God. God was not created. The author is very intentional about helping us understand that God was not created. God just always has been. So people of God, all of these gods that we keep creating to make this work for us and this isn't working so let's create this and let's do that all these gods that were created by man to fulfill a specific need the creation story tells us there is a God who is not created by man who is not a figment of someone's imagination who wasn't created just to make things seem better there's a God that existed before anything else existed who created everything third we learn that god creates and not only does he create here's what i want us to not miss this morning god creates and everything that god creates is good every day every day in the creation story at the end it says God looked at what he created and said this is good the ultimate judge the one that gets to decide what's good what's not the one who, who has the ultimate expectations of what creation should look like. The most creative being in our entire universe. He creates, and when he creates, he says, this is good. This is good. 
See, God brings light where there is darkness. He provides stable land where, is, where there is the, the chaos and the unknown of the seas. And he creates where there seems to be nothingness. He creates something out of nothing. And throughout the rest of Scripture, we see various writers and authors point back to the authority of God as the creator and the sustainer of life. God says to Moses in Genesis chapter 4, and if you were with us, uh, several of us men got together for coffee uh, earlier this week. We talked about this, this story. Moses is making excuses. He's, God's, God's called him from a burning bush, and, and he, he says, Moses, I want you to lead my people, and this is what you're going to do. And Moses keeps going, yeah, God, but, yeah, God, but, yeah, God, but. And he, he goes, God, I can't, I can't speak to people. I can't, how am I going to lead people? I can't talk. I've always been slow of speech. I've never really talked right. And God goes, Moses, who gave human beings their mouth? Now think about that for a second. Moses is going, I can't talk. I can't speak. The words aren't going to come out right. God stops and says, who made your mouth, Moses? Moses, God says, I made your mouth. I made your tongue. I made you. I'm going to give you the words to speak. I created. I sustain. We're going to be okay here, Moses. All I need is your obedience. In Psalm 95 that I, that I read before, or as we were starting the service, the psalmist says, In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Let me take this and shrink this down. No matter what you're going through, no matter what your future looks like, no matter what uncertainty looks like, no matter what your hesitations look like, no matter what the unknowns look like, no matter what you have in front of you, whether you know it's coming or not we serve a god who created everything who knows how this whole thing works who is in charge who has a plan who calls us to that plan and will ensure our success See, our story, here's the problem. When we talk about the obstacles in front of us, the unknown, guys, we always make our story about us. That's the human condition. It's always about us. It always comes down to us and how am I going to handle this and what am I going to do and I don't know how to do this and I, don't, I, and I, 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 I. And God says, I'm the creator of the universe. And everything I create, God says, is good. Our story should always begin with God's story. And God's story begins with him and him only. Our story always has to be put into context of God the creator. And don't miss this. If we can put aside our own wants and be used by God, his story includes making a new creation out of us. See, he created, but he wants to make a, a new creation. He wants to take what's, what's messed up by sin. We'll get into this a little bit more next week. And he wants to make a new creation, a new heart, a new us. And God's 
creations are always good. They're always good. So God, help us to find our place in your story. God, help us to see that your story is our story, that our story is your story, that, that God, that our story isn't always about us, but God, our story is about finding our place in you, Father. God, you created. God, you know. God, you have always been. God, you will always be. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the first and last. You're the beginning and the end. And God, if you are the beginning and the end, surely we can trust you with everything in the middle, God. So, Father, you are good. And God, what you create is good. Let us lean on your creation, God. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. All right. Thanks for joining us today for service. He is a good, good father, and it is good to be together celebrating today. You guys take a seat just for just a second so we can give you a couple quick instructions about uh, some things and just communicate about a couple pieces. Uh, Pastor Justin and I are going to get to the pigskin rumble here in just one second. Let me cover a, a couple other things that are coming up, and I've got notes about them. I want to make sure I don't miss anything here. So, um, first thing, if you're if you're newish with us, then we've got what we call a quick connect code that you can scan, and it's on one of those um, one of those bulletins that got passed out, or you could see one of the one of the people on staff and we have them on our phones but that just gives you an opportunity to scan that and pull pulls up a little form on your phone and you can just fill that out and we can just kind of get to know you a little bit better and contact you throughout the week so uh look at the code on the back of your bulletin or find one of the staff we'd love to connect with you welcome to everybody who is new or newish with us maybe you've been with us for a few weeks and we're trying really hard to connect with everybody it's kind of hard when we're outside and we're wearing masks and we stay far away and so if we haven't had a chance to actually meet you and connect with you we are we're doing our best and feel free to come up and say hey i'm new here uh we're uh we're just trying to connect with everybody uh the trunk or treat as of right now it's happening um october 28th that's a wednesday night and right now all you need to know is we need trunks so we're gonna do it right here in the parking lot and we need people who will decorate their trunks back of the truck back of the van back of the car or whatever uh and we're gonna gather the candy here and we're gonna kind of pre baggy and we're going to do some things to make it really safe but we need you to start thinking right now about possibly being one of our trunks at the trunk or treat and you're going to hear more about that in the coming weeks and that's going to happen uh on the evening the wednesday evening of october 28th and it's going to be right out here in the parking lot so start thinking about putting a trunk together um last thing before we talk about the game today um we're going to be moving indoors for our services on November 1st, which is going to begin two services, which is going to mean that our connection team, that's the people you see passing out bulletins and saying hello and uh, just kind of making everybody feel welcome. And we're going to need to essentially double that team because we're going to have two services. And so if you've been looking for a way to get plugged in and get connected, then next Sunday morning at 930, right over here by this tent, we're going to have a connection team meeting. So anybody who's currently on the connection team 9 30 next sunday morning we like to meet there and anybody who's interested in getting connected and maybe they think uh being one of our greeters or our ushers or passing out bulletins or whatever it might be a way that you can get connected we'd love to have you join us next sunday at 9 30 right over by that tent we have a connection team meeting all right <sighs> now today out of breath already today <laughs> oh my goodness gracious um today we are um playing our second annual pigskin rumble if you didn't know last year it ended in a tie so all the smack talk has uh been coming from a place of a tie and we'd like to break that tie this week we've got trophies to hand out and all kinds of stuff pastor justin do you have any intimidation you'd like to put on the mic today i'm just ready getting these hands nice soft and supple so that they're not stony <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, you, he's got some redemption to uh, to get out this year. So uh, this game is going to be uh, the teenagers. That's our 6th through 12th graders. That, that anybody that wants to play, you don't have to play, but we'd love for you to come up and support, even if you're not feeling like playing today. But 6th through 12th graders and their parents, and then our, our staffers and people who work with the teens will be playing as well. So if you are a parent of a younger kid and you're like, oh, I really wanted to play, you're going to get to in a couple years when your kid joins the youth group. But we still love you to come up and support us we've got a whole team getting lunch ready up there they're grilling out and uh they've got all kinds of stuff to do like chili dogs and everything we're doing it in a very safe way again so they'll be able to serve you uh and uh we want to just kind of have a good day at the ballpark it's a beautiful day there's bleachers up there but then you also are able to carry your own chairs uh we prefer not to drive back to the field because we're going to have a lot of foot traffic so walk if you can and if you need a ride uh minda tyler my wife is going to be at the golf cart right here and she's going to be giving people rides back and forth so if you'd like to uh get your chair and go and take a seat on the golf cart then she'll uh she'll be making trips back and forth yeah hey if you could hold the mic and one thing i want to say real quick is kyle's well aware that um i've been very busy with the start of a new school year and getting our teens back together so can we give a round of applause he has done so much to help this event come off again for a second straight year thank you Kyle. i'm just looking for an excuse to wear this hoodie 
once a year. Uh, so, uh, so here we go. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna offer us a word of closing, and then we'd love for you guys to stick around. We'd love to see you back at the field, and the game is gonna start basically once we all kind of migrate back there and and get set up. And if you're not able to join us back there, then thanks for being here with us today. Will you stand and uh, let me send you with a word of closing? God is uncreated, but God is creative and creating. And if you are needing a creative God in your life, a God that will continue to create opportunities and can continue to create ways to mend relationships and continue to create ways forward, God is still creating. And we serve that creative God. So go knowing that God continues to create in your life. And go knowing that his peace goes with you. Go in peace today.